Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Let's give it a few minutes while we uh, have everybody joining the session. Thank you so much. We're going to give um, around 10.02, 10.03. 10.03 will be our kickoff time. Good morning. My name is Vanessa Ledesma, Acting CEO and Director General for the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. Thank you for taking time to join us and welcome to the kickoff of our CHTA Live Masterclasses series, providing practical discussions, exchange and developing skills on specific subject matters. Our topic today is cybersecurity, what can go wrong, protect your business and reputation, make your staff cyber aware. We can move to the second slide, please. This is if you've joined one of our CHDA live sessions uh, previously. Uh, this session is slightly different because it is a master class and we want to facilitate for more engagement. And in other master class sessions, we'll have breakout rooms. We're hosting these on the Zoom meeting platform. Therefore, you have the ability, you, your sound can be uh, unmuted as well as your video. What we ask is if you have a question at any time during the presentation that you post this on the chat, everyone has the ability to access the chat and we'll bring you up, we'll bring you, uh, we'll allow you to make the question live in person or we can just relay it to the participants. You're welcome as well to exchange messages with all of the other panelists and the participants that are joining us. The session will be recorded and will be distributed uh, within the next 48 hours. And after our, this is our first session of the series, which will be distributed and shared with all of the participants, irrespective of their CHTA membership status. However, the rest of our masterclass series, the video recording, as well as the presentation will only be available to CHDA members. Therefore, if you have not joined or renewed, this is only one of the benefits with included with your membership. The session is scheduled to start to end around 11 a.m. If we can move to the next slide. A reminder that registration for Caribbean Travel Marketplace is open, celebrating 40 years. Marketplace is scheduled for October 3rd to the 5th in Puerto Rico. Early bear savings and this Friday, June 23rd. If you have not registered, we invite you to do so. Next slide. To the CHDA members joining us today, we value your continued support and encourage you to maximize the resources and tools available to you. If your company is not a CHDA member, you're missing on valuable resources to support your business continuity. We need and want your involvement. Join the My CHDA community today by contacting us at membership at caribbeanhotelandtourism.com. Next slide. You have also would have seen on the registration that a certificate of participation will be distributed with your participation at master classes. To do that, you must check in. The link to check in is on the chat and you will be able to do so with your last name. Certificates will be distributed within 30 days of this session. And the next slide just shows you the information that you need to put in with your last name and your confirmation number if you have your confirmation available. And if we can move to the next slide, let me introduce you to the panelists for the day. And 
Candice Burke, Major Account Manager, Southern Caribbean for Fortinet, and Dave Lake, Senior Engineer, Innovative Business Solutions, Inc. And our moderator for today, Sanof Niktastan, Executive Director for Bay Gardens Resorts. And on his leisure time, he is the chair of the Technology Task Force. And this is one of the activities from that task force. Sanof Nick, over to you. Well, thank you, Vanessa. It's interesting how I spend my leisure time. Um, you know, technology is, as you can see from the bio, if you look at the, the, the um, my designations, I'm not a technology person. I'm a finance person, a business person. But um, I think we all have seen how technology um, can affect us, uh, how we can make things better, but also how, uh, if we don't protect ourselves, how it can go horribly wrong. And you know the, the point of these masterclasses, it, it's not just targeted towards IT people. Um, I'm very happy that I've seen quite a few of you join and I recognize a few names. Uh, some of you are IT people. Uh, if you don't have your general manager or your director or your, your, your hotel owner with you, bring them along next time because uh, the knowledge that is going to be shared here is not just um, geared yeah, towards tech persons, but also um, business people as well to show how uh, technology can uh, make your business uh, better protected in this case, um, but also uh, how it can make you more efficient. Uh, this is the first of a series of masterclasses. Uh, the first one is focusing on cybersecurity because that's a hot topic these days. And uh, we have experts here um, with us in the persons of Candice Book and Dave Lake. Uh, I'm just going to read a, a short um, bio just so you can get a feel for the um, persons and their backgrounds. So uh, Candice uh, holds a Master of Science in Marketing from Edinburgh Business School and also a BA in Business Management from the University of Sunderland. And she's actually had 10 years of experience in the IT sales sector and is currently the major account manager at Fortinet and has a passion for building awareness about cybersecurity in the Caribbean. Welcome Candice and thank you for being part of this first uh, technology masterclass. Thank you so very much for having me. It's, it's, Thank you. it's a pleasure to see so many people on to talk about cybersecurity. This should be very exciting. It, it, I, I know it will be. And, <laughs> and some of the things that you shared in our initial uh, conversations were really surprising, um, quite shocking how, um, how vulnerable we are in the Caribbean as a sector. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm looking forward to getting those insights from you. And Dave Lake, uh, Dave I've known um, for quite some time. Uh, he's based here in, in St. Lucia. Uh, Dave is passionate about helping organizations succeed through innovative technology. His quest for knowledge of how things work has led him to gain many IT certifications from Avaya, Microsoft, Cisco, Fortinet, and CompTIA. And he has over 15 years of experience serving various ICT roles at Innovative Business Solutions based in St. Lucia, providing solutions to organizations throughout the Caribbean and South America and now heads the product development sales division of the company. So we have got the experts of experts here um, with us to talk about cybersecurity and to give you practical examples uh, of things that can go wrong, uh, things that we take for granted, and also how we can uh, educate our employees uh, to be more cyber aware. Uh, so without further ado, ladies first, Candice Yoram. Thank you so much. Um, is everyone hearing me clearly? Yes. Let me So thank you so very much for that introduction. Again, I would love this to be open discussion um, because I think um, cybersecurity requires an open discussion about various things and not just um, the technology aspect. So I kind of want to run through uh, my agenda for, um, for today. Um, I'm going to go through firstly a little bit about some IT trends and then understanding some key security challenges um, for uh, the hospitality sector, um, going a little bit into how the attacks happen and what are the directions that the attack takes, and then understanding the business impact of breaches for, for the hospitality sector. Um, because this this last this last segment is I think is is important and like I said, cybersecurity the, the requires a somewhat of an open discussion um, because it's not just technology it's a it's a mix of people process and technology 
um, that we have to look at. So going into a little bit about the IT trends, this is no um, surprise that some of the four major industry trends that we are seeing, firstly, work from home, um, with obviously the current pandemic. Um, everybody has moved to a more work from home model or a hybrid model. Some persons, accounts, departments is at home. I've seen people move their entire call center to staff working from remote. Um, so work from, work from anywhere is now a trend and a lot of people are adapting it. And even as we, I dare say, and I hope this is true, we move out, we are moving out of the pandemic. I do believe that that work from anywhere hybrid will, is here to stay and a lot. And that in itself brings a lot of challenges. Um, also another trend is digital acceleration. Digital acceleration, meaning that everybody's moving to um, digitalize, bringing a better customer experience by adopting IoT initiatives. Uh, for example, I, I recently, I went to a hotel and I was able to check in on my phone. Um, I was able to select my room that I was um, that I that I wanted to go in. So a lot of a lot of industries moving towards the digital era, and with all of that, with the attack surface expanding, with all these Internet of Things, with all these devices coming onto your network, uh, the threat landscape has also evolved. Um, hackers have now become very ingenious. Um, they are using a lot of artificial intelligence. Um, to get in threats. They are using a lot of phishing and spear phishing, which I will go through a little bit um, in their threats. They are getting a lot, they are getting a lot more creative in the way they attack. And therefore, as an entity, we need to now step back and say, okay, we need to focus a little bit on security so that we can counteract um, these threats. So Going into a little bit specifically, which I mentioned of your, your cybersecurity landscape for the hotel sector. As I mentioned, we've seen 70% of hoteliers actively engaging in Internet of Things initiatives, initiatives that can improve your customer experience, that can ensure that your customers are um, that you, that you ensure that your customer have a wonderful experience coming into to your hotel environment. For me, as a frequent flyer, as a traveler, that's one thing that I, I always look for um, when I'm going to a hotel, how easy it is to interact um, with the hotel. Um, sometimes you go and you're able to order room service off a TV, or now you can scan an app on your phone and you get room service and you pay for it and they come and deliver it to you. All those initiatives, a lot of people are adapting to improve their customer experience. And with that, they are layering out some cloud initiatives as well. So I, I mentioned I'm able to go and check in um, on my phone. That's a cloud adaption strategy that most people are adapting. With that though, um, some of the attacks of hotels, it's mostly on your point of sale systems. Imagine, you not being able to check out or check in guests or imagine your entire reservation system being encrypted and you can't get access to any reservations. That literally cripples your entire um, operation because you can't check in guests, you can't check out guests um, and you can't figure out who has reservations or if you're booked or if you're not. And that's where the attackers are going with, with, with hoteliers. They are looking at your point of sale systems. And a large part of those attacks comes from phishing emails, which is why I want to spend some time talking about phishing emails later on. What we are also seeing as well is a little bit of struggle with compliance um, as it relates to PCI compliance. Um, and I want to briefly go through uh, what happened with, with Marriott. Um, everybody knows recently Marriott 
um, not recently, a few years ago, Marriott chain would have got a, a data breached. And they were actually fined by the GDRP a whopping one point, sorry, 123 million um, for data breach fines. And they lost 500 million, 500, yes, 500 million credit card guest information, reservation information um, to that data breach. It's interesting on that background of that data breach though, because it actually started in 2014 um, with their Starwood chain. They didn't own it yet. They bought it over and it was only discovered in 2018, four years. It took four years for them to discover that their Starwood brand had a breach in their reservation system that was leaking information about their guests. Um, and that's an interesting case study, but more so is the fines that Marriott had to face because of that data breach. And I'll talk about uh, uh, some other business impacts as well, but this is a classic example of a very huge hotel chain that you would think would throw a lot of money behind cybersecurity being breached, being fine, and, and, and having challenges as it relates to cybersecurity. I don't know if there are any questions um, as I move on. Not yet, Candace, but we asked the audience if they're welcome to post on the chat. We'll let you know. Okay, wonderful. So moving into how these attacks happen. Um, I have a list of, of 10 um, from phishing to spyware to malware the denial of service, mobile devices, specifically as your guest Wi-Fi, you have a lot of devices coming onto your network, um, zero day attacks, meaning that these, are th these attacks, there are no signatures for the attacks, um, ransomware, ransomware is the encryption of your servers or your devices, um, and you have to pay money to cryptocurrency for um, and middle, man in the middle attacks. But I wanna focus on phishing and here's why, because for the last three years, we've become um, very heavily reliant on emails and we've also become creatures of information. Everybody wants to get information about everything that's happening in the world. And a lot of people now use phishing as their major form of getting into your organization. As a matter of fact, while for Marriott, while there weren't a lot of details about how it happened, it is, it is thought that it happened through a, a, a email, a malicious email that came in and someone clicked on it. And that's how a malware was actually downloaded and get onto their guest reservation system. So I wanted to go through a little bit about what is a phishing email and how you can spot a phishing email. Cause I absolutely think that this point is quite important. So these are actual examples of, you know, at Fortinet, for some reason, I get a lot of phishing emails. Um, I guess they probably want to test to see a Fortinet employee if I would click on it, right? <laughs> I suppose. And not only that, Fortinet as a company hold us uh, accountable for cybersecurity and our awareness. So they also do tests on us. So if you look at this email, um, you notice that the, I mean, the ADP payroll, yes, you're seeing ADP payroll, but this online payroll portal ally.com looks a bit strange, right? Look at the email. Plus when you're replying, look who you're replying to. You're replying to somebody at comcast.net. And that's a clear way of looking at, you know, a phishing email and how, and how you, could, you could spot it. Plus, the date, you have a bunch of undisclosed recipients. I got a lot of this in my Hotmail account as well. So key thing is who the email comes from and actually looking at the, actually looking at the email itself, who you're gonna reply to, because everybody clicks reply, who you're replying to. And then another thing which is not here is sometimes a lot of emails, those social emails have a lot of spelling errors. 
a lot of grammatical errors, a lot of capitalizations where it shouldn't be. Um, those are key things that you could look for. Um, another one is look, hovering over the link. You see, you have over this link, it said www.paperlessemployee.com. But when you hover over the link, there you go. It, you're saying HTTPS. It's a completely different URL that you're going to. Key thing to note, though, I don't know if, if, if other devices do it. I've tried it on my phone. It's difficult to have one CD link on your phone. So when you're getting an email and you're looking at your phone, and somebody's urging you to do something that you're not quite sure about, I think flag it and maybe review it after. Because this hover over the link, you don't get that on your mobile phone. And, and mostly on your mobile phone, it's easy for you to click on a link because it's there, it's front of you. And that's, that's how we get all our, all our communication comes through mobile. Candace, so, yes. sorry, two questions. So, and, and you may, address the first one shortly, but what do you do with this type of emails? I mean, do you reply? Do you open it? Of course, never forward it, I would imagine. So so if you can give so, some guidelines. Generally, when you receive a phishing email, you report it to your IT department. You have received this um, and they can take it from there in terms of deleting the email, check the email. Um, at Fortinet, what we do as a company is that I would forward the email or we have local SEs that that, that it's, I would send the email to our local SE and he will open it in what we call a sandbox environment. And that environment will actually see what it's going to do. I recently got one and I sent it to my SE and he downloaded the Excel file and the Excel file was actually trying to inject a manway but it was done in a sandbox. And a sandbox is a controlled environment where you can execute a file and see what it does and see the behavior. Um, some companies, and Dave will talk about it, um, will employ solutions that, that will do that. You will have a sandboxing solution that if you forward it to IT, IT can open it into a sandbox, see what it does. And if it is a malicious email, they can delete it. If it's not, they can let you know this is safe and you can open it. Okay, we have one question. Mobile use has increased exponentially. How effective is McAfee or Norton type of protection software for a server? Oh, say that again. How effective is McAfee or Norton type of protection software for a server? A server. So mm -hmm. honestly, those are standard antivirus solutions which, are, which work on signatures. And those are fine. However, like I said, attackers are becoming more creative. So solutions that incorporate artificial intelligence and machine learning um, give you that extra layer of protection against ransomware and zero day attacks. Yes, Norton and McAfee, they are fine because they are signature based. You patch and you do your signatures, but how do you treat with a zero day attack? And how do you treat with um, uh, run somewhere. And that's where you need artificial intelligence and machine learning solutions because they are based on behavior. For example, if you are, if you get a file that seems legit and you click on the file, your antivirus and everything would, it looks like a legit file because it doesn't have a signature for it, right? It, it's a legit Excel, it, it's fine. But when you click on it, it's doing something like going to your servers to try to encrypt it, which is an unusual behavior. It's not supposed to be doing that. A file like that is not supposed to be doing that. So having solutions that incorporate artificial intelligence will pick up those behavioral anomalies that can protect you. Thanks. No problem. So I want, and this is the interactive part. So I have a, a um, I have these two websites. So that last email, let's say for you clicked on it. Um, for some reason you clicked on it and it brings you to this login page. Um, could anyone tell me which is the real um, ADP login page and which is the fake and why would you say it's fake? Can you give the the audience that are participants a little bit of the you know uh, of the URL or something because 
I'm seeing it, but I'm, I'm not seeing maybe a little bit of the specifics. You may be giving it away, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it is exactly what you just said, right? Because let me go back. Uh, let me show them back. So you clicked on this here, and you have to go to a website to put in your login information. Um, so Candace, Paul has responded, the larger uh -huh. screen. Joanne has responded, the left, the address is secured. Excellent. I love that response. If you look here, you see any little icon that has a lock, plus it's a workforce ADP URL. This one, look at it. It's an unsecured, it's an unsecured um, page with a crazy URL that makes no sense. It's not even HTTPS, which is an encrypted URL. It's some um, Simon per ADP um, URL. So in looking at the URL, you can detect, because has the prettiness of the page, <laughs> no one will look, right? And if it is, you look at the two URLs, now you can actually see which is fake and which is not. Yeah? You know, Candice, it's interesting you mentioned that because I think uh, I wonder um, how many businesses, um, legit businesses, still don't have a secure, an SSL um, mm. certificate, right? A secure exactly. website. Correct. Um, and, but I also wonder, right, how many um, phishing websites have an SSL certificate? I mean, <laughs> that, that, because I, 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 I think that that's great. Um, I can see the person... Uh, and Joanne and, 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 and Rachel and a few others who got it right. It's great that they, they recognize that because I didn't catch that right away. I was mm -hmm. trying to see, I could I was trying to see the URL. But right. it's not possible for a phishing website to have the HTTPS. Yes, but it will go, sometimes they do HTTPS with a secure link, but it goes mm -hmm. to some weird email. So you see, this might actually have HTTPS on it, but it will still have the same parrot URL. So the URL itself will make no sense to you because it's going to something mm -hmm. else. And what mm -hmm. will happen with this phishing email site is that they will you will put in your username and password and you will click login and you will feel that you entered it incorrectly. And then it will redirect you to this site. And you will okay. enter it. You will enter it correctly and log in. So for the user perspective, you didn't realize what just happened. Right. In some instances, these two websites, no, in this instance, it was different. But in some instances, they build it the exact same way. So when you put it in, it's almost, you redirected a new website. And you know, as an end user, you think you may have put in your password wrong, because I do that sometimes. You may have put in your password incorrectly and it redirects you and you put it again and you get access and you think, okay, everything is fine. But in that single moment, somebody would have stolen your credentials. Hmm. Yeah. So I have another one. Um, this was actually from our regional sales manager. Um, he's, he did this in a, a presentation. And um, he got this on his phone. I remember I told you, phones are, phones are different. Um, he got this on his phone. Somebody tried to log in to his... Um, his new login to his iPhone. Okay. Um, so he then clicked on it because look, it's an HTTPS website, right? Now, mind you, it has a dot in before, but it's difficult to see this little dot here before the colon, but that's okay. So he clicked. It's, uh, oh, sorry. I do, I, can I, you all are seeing the top of my screen or you're seeing the share screen? Uh, the share screen. Uh, how can I get rid of this? I want to get rid of so you can see. I need you to see the top so you can see the URL. Uh, uh, it's uh, restoremyiclouds.com. Yeah. Yeah, we're Good. Seeing Okay, that. I'm seeing it. Good. So can anybody tell me what's wrong with this one? How you can spot that it's incorrect. It looks perfect, right? Like even me, I had I had to double take a few times on this. So I mean, like, what is is yeah, I had to double take a few times on this one. 
Dave, Dave, you're talking? You're mute. Yeah, too many eyes. There you go. <laughs> In the URL, restore dash my dash ii clouds. So I want I wanted these examples because I wanted to show you how creative threat actors are. How because this looks like a super legit Apple login. Um, it does with the slight variation of two eyes. And, and I say this to also start the conversation about end user cybersecurity awareness. As an IT person, as our management hotel owners, um, cybersecurity is not just an IT responsibility. It is a culture that you have to embed because an email like this, one of your hotel staff can easily click on. If it is, you don't have programs to train your end users your, on your staff on uh, cybersecurity solutions or cybersecurity awareness. What is a phishing email? What is a, 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 a spare phishing email? Um, spare phishing is, you know, we are, there are a lot of people on social media. So let's say Dave likes the yacht around St. Lucia. And he's into yachting. And somebody sees that, they can send him an email. Hey, you know, click on this to see these new yachts. So, and it's targeted towards him. That's where spare phishing emails are going. And that's why it has to be a holistic approach. You have to look at your people and train your people and get them a little cyber, cyber aware of what's happening. And it's not just for your organization, it's also in their, in their personal lives. Like you get a, a, a text on your phone that you're unclear about, you shouldn't click on it. Simple things that can help the person themselves be more cyber aware in their daily lives. So it, it brings the cybersecurity awareness to your people, to even your guest users, help them understand um, what they should be doing, pushing out campaigns about cybersecurity and how they can treat and spot uh, phishing emails or cyber attacks that are happening. Any questions so far? I think, am I going over time? I mean, I think, yeah, well, um, let's see. Yeah, Sano? I only have a few more. I yeah, only we, have a few we, more just a couple more. Yeah, we want even a little bit of time for Dave, yeah? Yes, okay, sorry, yes, a couple of more. So I think yeah. I, I talked a little bit about um, the, a little bit about the cybersecurity challenges for um, hotels. One of the biggest things is cost reduction. Um, how can you secure your network with limited budgets and secure cybersecurity staff? Because not everybody has a dedicated security consultant on staff. So that's a major challenge. How, how are you going to treat with Yes, I want to secure my network. I want to ensure that, but I also have a limited budget and I don't have any security consultants on, on my staff. And how can I add on and leverage Internet of Things services, expanding my attack service because I want to improve my customer experience. So I still want to improve my customer experience, but I'm also at expanding my attack service and making me more vulnerable. And that's very important to understand that, yes, you can you can improve your customer service and customer experience, but you're also expanding your digital attack surface. So you need to employ solutions and processes that make you less vulnerable in doing that. So some of the business impact, I think I, in terms of looking at Marriott, um, one of the major things is damage to brand awareness. Um, that's a big thing, not losing the reputation of your customers is, is, is to me, one of the tremendous impacts of a breach because then customers don't trust you with their information. So they don't want to come and stay with you. Um, the impact on your revenue because you've, you've lost We may have lost Candace. Let's give her a few minutes. Thank 
Candace, we lost you. Um, I see her name here. Yeah, I thought it was an issue of mine actually, but. Yeah, oh. no, sorry. I, uh, I think my internet dropped. Wow, I'm so sorry. Wow. Not a problem, not a problem. <laughs> you, you didn't click on something you shouldn't have, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I was actually, my hands were up there. But I think, honestly, the, the business impact, I think, I, I, I think everybody's clear on, you know, loss of productivity, loss of, loss, loss of um, customer reputation, loss of revenue. Those are some of the top business impacts for cybersecurity. Because, you know, a lot of times when we propose solutions or processes, they're like, oh, my God, this is too expensive. But I put it in the framework of it's either you spend 30,000 US to secure your data, or you can probably lose $3 million. If you look at it in the context of what you lose versus what you're spending, then the spend becomes a no-brainer. Um, so any questions for me? There is one on the chat, but I'm going to leave it for after day, yeah, just yeah. in case. Sure, no problem. So Dave, now that I've, I hope I didn't scare anybody, um, but now that I've run through all the risk and the business impact, um, Dave is going to give you the solution to the problem. Dave, and you should be able to just bring up your slides. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, so Candice has kind of given us an overview of what can happen um, and a layout of the threat landscape, uh, especially to hospitality industry. And I want to talk a bit about best practices. Um, this morning, I'm taking off a bit of my technology hat. I am speaking very simply. Uh, trying to get people to think about this problem a bit differently. When we speak about cybersecurity, people tend to think that it is associated with IT people. And as a result, um, there tends to be a backing away of their involvement in this. And uh, my presentation this morning is really aimed at helping everybody realize that you are part of either the problem or the solution, and hopefully you're part of the solution. Um, being cyber safe is really no different from being safe in the physical world. And um, especially in the hospitality industry, I know that um, a lot goes into ensuring that, uh, you know, your properties are secure. Uh, you do various things, the hiring of uh, security guards, uh, the placing of locks in certain areas, fencing, all of those things are things that we can see and we are very aware of, not just in terms of hospitality, but also in terms of our day-to-day -day life. And we know about it. When we speak about cybersecurity, it's tends to become very abstract to many people, but I like to associate it with physical security because it really helps to get us grounded in what we are trying to do. In the same way, 
you would lock the doors on your car, on your home. Uh, you know, if you're in a hotel, you'd lock the doors on the guest room. You hope that there are security guards. Cybersecurity is no different. It's just that now we are dealing with a digital world we're using computers and we need to put measures in place to protect not only our physical security but also cyber security and we need to adapt our behavior to prevent losses and a lot of the things that uh, Candice spoke about. I believe this is very important because when we talk about uh, dealing with a cybersecurity problem, sometimes people tend to just want to throw money at the problem without realizing that uh, you need to take a holistic approach to this and understand what you are dealing with. You can spend all the money on you know shiny boxes and all of those things, but if you do not have the right mentality, uh, you will end up getting yourself breached um, with attacks and all of those things. And in keeping this mindset of, you know, the physical world, I like to think about situational awareness. Um, there are some places that I just will not go, especially if it's late at night. Why? Because that may be a, uh, a, an area that's prone to heavy crime. You go into there, you're asking for trouble. And, um, you know, if you go into uh, those areas where, you know, they are crime hotspots, you use caution when you go there. For some reason, we tend to have that mentality in the physical world, but not adopt it uh, in relation to technology. And, you know, while I was preparing for this presentation, I, you know, thought back to a time before we had all of these fancy computers and, you know, there were a lot of manual processes. And it seems like you know, there was a lot of care taken to secure those manual processes. But right now, with the rapid adoption of technology, people tend to believe that, you know, it's something I don't need to worry about. And I believe the first step is being aware of what the threats are to your organization. Uh, so I, I want to ask a question. What would you consider to be the biggest threat to your organization? Um, some people would say, well, I don't know. Or I've heard people say, well, Nothing can ever happen to me. Um, I'm in the Caribbean. Nobody gets attacked in the Caribbean. And, uh, you know, um, in speaking with people like Candice, um, I know Fortinet does a lot of analysis of attacks in the Caribbean, and, and, and you see that there are attacks. Having that approach is like going into a crime hotspot and flashing money. What do you expect to happen? You're going to get robbed. So um, you, you just don't do that. You need to be looking over your proverbial cyber shoulder. And this is more uh, in line with a mentality than actually putting in products or doing anything. Because really... Your cyber defense starts there. It starts with an attitude. Um, I have here, keep calm and trust your gut. And actually, I'm going to go into an overload of cliches because 
I believe when it comes to preventing and, and, and dealing with cybersecurity, all of these cliches are, are, are very important for us to consider. Security is everyone's responsibility. It is. It really is not just... Some people say, well, it's, it's the IT guy's responsibility. No, it's yours as well. Or what about this one? Never put off for tomorrow what you can do today. Some people say, well, we'll deal with the problem when it comes. That's never the approach you want to uh, have when it comes to cybersecurity because uh, Candice spoke a bit about it. Um, you may say, well, it's not that big of a deal, but when your business is crippled and you are losing money, uh, it, it really is too late to uh, start thinking about it. But what about this one? This one became very popular after 9-11. And uh, um, I believe it very well applies to this uh, cybersecurity. See something, say something. You, do you know that many breaches happen and are exacerbated in their impact because somebody noticed something happening and they just said nothing. The impact could have been a lot less if somebody had just said something. Oh, what about this one? A chain is as strong as its weakest link. That's a good cliche when it comes to cybersecurity because you may have all of your, you know, fancy systems and all of that, and you just have one little area. And that's what really makes this whole topic very scary is that you, you have this one weakness and that is the weakness that gets ex exploited. Um, and that's why we see multi-million dollar companies uh, suffer great losses as a result of attacks that come to them. I, I want to end this cliche veil by, by using this other quote. The journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. And really, that's, that's, that's what we were talking about this morning, that you need to make that first step. And dealing with cybersecurity sometimes seems like a, an enormous task. But really, it's about taking that first step. And uh, if I can apply it once again to physical security, you know, it's all in layers. You lock your house, then get a security guard and so on and so forth. And with those layers of security, you begin to protect yourself. Um, do you know what are possible signs of compromise? And again, one of the biggest problems we have in organizations is that people sometimes do not say anything. So your antivirus detects a problem. And you know what I've seen people do? They just say, well, this is keeping me from doing my work. And they just close whatever it's, it's been said. Do not pay attention to uh, an error message. And as a result, they try to continue working without saying something. So. Uh, on the screen here, I, I have a number of possible signs of, of compromise that, you know, you can see um, uh, things that can happen. You, 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 all of a sudden, you get an error that, you know, you're losing this space or you have pop-ups that suddenly appear. Sometimes they're trying to tell you, you know, your security is compromised or all of those things or, or, or you see files or transactions that should not be there. Or what, this, this is a 
big thing that you know sometimes uh, gets overlooked. There is slowness on the system. That should raise a flag. Especially if you know that a, that system was not this slow. Normally, we know the speed at which we can do transactions on our computers and with the programs that we use. And when you see slowness, it's a sign. And this needs to be flagged. Uh, or you get unusual messages. All of these are possible signs of compromise. And I am emphasizing with all of these that you need to say something. Um, it's very important that we instill not only in ourselves, but also in our colleagues, in our staff, that uh, there needs to be a raising of flags when things are, are very strange. I want to tell you that you are your biggest threat. Do you know you may be the reason why your organization is targeted? The biggest cybersecurity threat is not hackers. You know, there are many people who are, uh, uh, they think when you think of cybersecurity of some movie or some TV show that they've seen with a guy behind, you know, crunched behind a laptop with a black screen and he's typing away and doing all of those things. And the reality is the biggest threat to our organizations are actually inside of the organization, not outside. And you may, you may wonder, how can this be? Well, you, you have disgruntled staff they can possibly compromise your systems because uh, sometimes they have access to things that they should not have access to and can do sabotage. You have uh, security fatigue and negligence. And this is a big thing that I, I will be talking about because a lot of uh, systems are compromised because somebody just, you know, didn't feel it was necessary to go through all of the security requirements that are normally recommended. You see, what do, what do you mean by that? Well, I can I can give you an example. Many systems come with default passwords. And those default passwords are quite simple. Why? Because it helps in, you know, the initial uh, you know, configuration of those systems. And people say, okay, this password is easy. Let's keep it. Or people tend to use the same password over and over and over and over again on multiple systems. You know what happens? A hacker gets access to your password and it may not even be your work password. They get password... Uh, it, they get access to, you know, your Facebook password. And that is what they use to now gain access to your corporate email. What caused that? Security negligence. You're just reusing the same password over and over and over. You see, sometimes security rules and guidelines might seem too burdensome and inconvenient. And... Uh, as a result, uh, people try to skirt around it. You get 
uh, a message on your computer saying, you need to change your password. You try to put in a password and it tells you, your password is too simple. So you know, you know what people tend to do? They go, they get a little piece of paper, a little sticky note, they write the password down and they stick that sticky note on the monitor. Well, you've just compromised your system and you were your biggest threat. You don't know who has access to your office or who in coming and spending two seconds takes a look and has now memorized that password and they can now try that password multiple places. I like to ask questions. So uh, as it relates to access, who has access to your data or to your network? And in this, I, I want to emphasize again that your biggest threat is not outside your organization, but is actually inside. We can no longer even trust our staff or our colleagues because you just don't know what's going on in their mind. And sometimes access to the wrong information or information that they were not supposed to have can lead to all kinds of problems. You know, in the olden days, you would have information stored on paper and it would be very difficult. It was easy to keep that near to you. But right now, uh, with uh, you know, systems on computers, it makes that very di difficult to do sometimes. Even on, on your properties, who has access to your IT racks or your server rooms? Do you know if somebody has tampered with your computer? Who has access to your physical computing device? I, I remember working with um, one uh, business and the business owner was suspicious of a an employee and as a result he had a key logger installed on that employee's computer because he he was suspicious that that person was leaking information well do you know somebody can put a key logger on your computer as well what's that they can actually plug in a device and everything you type is being stored who has access to your physical computer? You see, all of these are questions that, that we need to ask. Who knows your password? And again, this gets multiplied. And it's quite scary because sometimes you may just give somebody access to your password for one system. But you know what happens? That password is actually in use on a number of other systems. So it's, you say, okay, I'm, I'm only giving that person access to log in and, and just get a file from my computer. Well, you now have access to your email. Um, a number of computers, sometimes people store their passwords. So now they've gained access to your computer. They now have access to your bank accounts. Who has access? Uh, and these are the kinds of questions that I believe we need to be asking. As it relates to access, can guests reach your back office network? Sometimes systems are put in place because they are easy and they are simple. Sometimes the people that have access to your network may not even be paying guests. They may be freeloaders. And it brings up a very important part of security that sometimes we don't even think of, which is 
the availability. So you may have bandwidth and your bandwidth is now slow. You now have slow internet. Just because you have people who are not authorized on the network using it for their own personal reasons. And, and sometimes it's to do all kinds of activity, downloading stuff, and they're using up all the bandwidth that you should have had. We can use technology to uh, deal with that. Um, firewalls, network segmentation. But I want to emphasize this. Poorly configured technology is useless. As we talk about cybersecurity, a lot of people want to talk about you know, let's put in a firewall. Let's put in this system. Let's put in that system. And all of that is good. All of that is important. But poorly configured technology is useless. In fact, it's, it's a bit worse because it gives you a false sense of security and you are believing that everything is okay when, in fact, you're opening up the floodgates for uh, people to do all kinds of stuff. I'm, I'm going to just quickly go through this um, because Candice did talk about this. 90% uh, of uh, successful attacks have happened in using emails. And emails is... Um, one of the, the big areas and one of the things that uh, Candice talked about was impersonation. I want to tell you one other thing. Too much information. This one is, is very important. Very often, people are giving attackers information. Things like answers to security questions, your interests, your schedules, and they do that by sharing information online. Uh, so be very careful about what you share on uh, online. I want to tell you that you need a plan right now. Cybersecurity is not something that you need to think about tomorrow. It's not something that you need to think about two, 10 years from now. But you need a plan right now to do it. Thank you. I don't know if there are any questions. If um, thank you so much for that, um, both you and Candice. I think that it, it definitely um, increased my awareness. Um, you know, some of the things you mentioned about if you see something, say something. Um, we take these for granted. Well, the computer's just slow today. And then we assume that because we have other things in place that we're not under attack because of it. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I, Vanessa, I know you said that there were a few questions in the, um, in, well, in the chat. I, we have uh, only one about insurance. We have one. How strongly do you recommend cybersecurity insurance? And before we address that, we know we're a little bit, we're, we're definitely going to use the original allotted time. So we want to ask mm -hmm. the participants to put in any questions. And if you are able to stay, and if we see that around 11.15, we have some additional questions. If you want to stay, do so. If not, remember that the uh, presentation will be distributed afterwards. So the question was, how strongly do you recommend cybersecurity insurance? If you want me to take that one, yes. Certainly. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, 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 my view on cyber insurance, yes, you can use it because as, it, as with all things, you do not want your business to become crippled um, and you have fines to pay and it cripples your revenue. Uh, but that is just one element. Dave kind of mentioned a lot of it when he says, it's a holistic approach. So you're having cyber insurance, yes, 
but you need to also train your employees. You need to also implement processes. You need to have an incident response plan. And if your incident response plan includes insurance, fine. But that's a small element of a holistic pie. Um, and I think that's like, you know, you, Dave mentioned you purchase a firewall. That's one element. That's one thing you can do. But insurance, yes, you can do it, but understand that that's not, you, you can't, you shouldn't buy insurance and say, I have cybersecurity insurance, so I'm good. Um, you should look at other things as part of your cybersecurity posture. Any other comments on that matter? I do have a question. I mean, we, uh, Dave, you mentioned about a plan is recommended. So most, we have a number of our members that are independent small properties where everybody is responsible for a little bit of everything. So what would you say are the three initial steps that somebody should do in terms of planning against attacks like this? And what sort of resources, you know, is it expensive or what can be accessible that it's low cost, but really necessary? Okay. Um, I think the, the first thing that people need to do is get an assessment of where they are. That's, again, going back to the imagery of physical security, knowing where you are. Um, and that's looking at a number of things. Number one, do your staff have cybersecurity awareness training? That is very important because um, like you saw from my presentation as well as Candice's presentation, a lot of attackers are using social engineering to actually breach properties uh, um, and it's not like you see in the movies some guy on a black screen so um, that would be one of the first things that I, I would see another thing would be to get some kind of um, professional assessment of your network what is set up there? Do you have firewalls, segmentation? Another thing that, that, that's very important is backups um, because um, mm -hmm. it's not a question of if you get attacked, it really is a question of when um, and you, you, that, that is really how you to think and you need to have a plan to move forward from there um, and a backup is very important for that so those are the things that i would say uh, again um, number one training number two uh getting an actual you know equipment like firewalls network segmentation and make sure you get it done by the right people because like i said you can get equipment but it's totally useless if it's poorly configured and number three backups um, those may not necessarily be in the correct order but those are things that i believe you know you really need to be thinking about and then i know some one of the things you just asked also is cost um from a training perspective um some of the um, online training is, is free. So for example, Fortinet has a NSC1 training, which is free to the public. You can actually go on training.fortinet's website and that gives cybersecurity awareness training. It has nothing to do with our products or anything. Cybersecurity awareness training. It teaches you who are threat actors? What are the threat actors? How to spot a phishing email? What you should be looking for? What is spear phishing? What is it gives 
everybody that whole insight into cybersecurity awareness and all your end users could go on and do the training at no cost. It is it is a free it is a free service um, uh, allotted to everybody that you can do. Um, Candice, do you mind um, perhaps putting that link in the um, sure, no problem. I will. So yeah, thank you. Are there any other questions, comments? You have two experts, and we may have others in on the line as well. Anything else? Well, it looks like the crowd has gone quiet. Thank you for sharing that, Candice. Um, so I think we've, we've got three minutes and it seems we may not have any other questions. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Candice and Dave for great, insightful and at times scary presentations. Uh, I hope that, especially for those of us who are non-IT persons that we're scared into action um, and take very seriously the, the point that we need to act now and to take it very seriously. Um, this will be the first of our um, series of uh, masterclasses. Uh, I, believe that there are a few that we have on top, but we would certainly love to get feedback um, from persons as to what other topics they would be interested in. Uh, some of the things that we're looking at include um, crypto and NFTs and how they apply in the hospitality environment, uh, data analytics. Uh, we've got a series of online marketing classes as well that will be coming up. Um, I'm trying to think what were the other ones. And of course, workforce automation. I hate that term because our employees aren't robots, but um, with the uh, labor shortages we're finding, it's all about how to use technology to um, overcome those labor shortages and to make your workforce more productive. Uh, so those are some of the topics. Um, Vanessa, I don't know if, if, is it perhaps that we'd want to send a poll out um, afterwards as part of it so we could give them some options and get an idea of, um, when they would like or which topics they would like to, to get next. And we're also going to be going to the high tech um, summit um, the, with, in conjunction with HFTP. Um, so I'll be there, Vanessa will be there. Dave, I believe you are going to be attending as well, right? Yes. Yeah, so yourself and, and Richard from IBS. So um, you'll be there as well. And, and hopefully, hopefully we'll get some ideas to some of the new trends and topics in um, hospitality technology that um, we'll be able to apply um, to future presentations. And so, Nick, thank you for that. And yes, we'll send a, a, a poll, a survey so that we can get your feedback since you joined us, all of you joined us at this first session and anything else that you may find um, interesting in terms of a resource, maybe not specifically a, a virtual learning session, but other things. So Sanovnik and I will discuss some ideas that just came up from the discussion today. Definitely. I mean, I, I've learned a lot from today and there are, I think, more questions that I have <laughs> after today. Yeah. So certainly as Sanovnik reference, this is not only for IT individuals, but for everyone, um, because it is very important that everyone has an understanding of the challenges and the opportunities as well. And as Dave mentioned, we're all part of making sure that we are protected. Unless there are any other questions um, from the audience, And as a reminder, a certificate of participation will be distributed to all those that checked in uh, today. Claire, if you can uh, put in uh, the link once again, so that everyone, anyone that has not had a chance to check in, just put it in. If for some reason you have a problem, um, just email us at membership at caribbeanhotelandtourism.com. As a reminder as well, the video presentation and the slides will be distributed for this session exclusively to all the attendees, but in our future sessions, only CHDA members will have access to the video recording as well as the slide presentation. Um, as Anavnik mentioned, this is only one of our uh, sessions uh, from our technology task force. We will also be sharing with you information about a special discount for membership with the Hospitality Finance and Technology Professionals Association. And I see we have a question, Lionel. Uh, yes, um, I just want to ask um, one of the panelists there a question. How do you identify an email coming in 
um, as not genuine or genuine, where this saying that your password is expired, is going to expire, say for your email account. So you have your email server and you get an email purporting to come from your service provider or to come from your host um, email that says that your password is going to expire, you must reset it. How, how do you identify such a, that's my question. Thank you. Candace or Dave? Um, I was going to go through, I didn't have enough time to go through all my slides, um, one of the things that, that you can do and is get your IT provider or whoever to set up um, some kind of warnings. So there, there are sometimes you get warnings for emails that are outside of the organization. Um, a message for you to do a password reset should come from within the organization. Um, that warning would automatically flag an email that is from some kind of fraudulent you know, source and tell you immediately, hey, be on the lookout, there may be a problem. Now, you will get that, that warning if I send you an email as well because I'm outside of your organization. But even more so when it is something that looks genuine. Um, in addition to that, uh, there needs to be some kind of awareness of what are the type of emails people should expect. And in the absence of that, um, you treat everything somewhat suspiciously, especially emails of that nature. So, um, it's very good to get a baseline to yourself and others in the organization that you know these are the kinds of emails you would expect for an expired password and so on and so forth. If you see anything else, you treat it as if it was a threat. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Any other comments or questions before we wrap up? Okay. Well, thank you very much again for joining us as we kick off our masterclass series. As Sanofnik mentioned, this is just the first of many that will be coming up. Um, we wish to remind you that we also have a CHDA Live Forging Ahead series session next Thursday at our usual time of 10 a.m. And it is regarding um, hurricane readiness plans. Um, we will be sharing a note on the specifics for that, the information it's on our website. And we also remind you if you need to get in touch, membership at caribbeanhoteltourism.com. If you're not a CHDA member, we invite you to join to access not only these resources, but others. And I do want to thank Sanofnik and the Technology Task Force for uh, all of the arrangements for our session today and for those that are coming through. And with that, I'm gonna um, wish everyone a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Take care.